sometimes I have a tough time feeling proud of myself. Do you know what that, you know? I, I can think relate. I've had other people call in our, our show that have talked about that, you know? What do you think it is? I don't know. I feel like, um, I almost feel like it's just that there's a disconnect. Like it doesn't even land on me. Or I feel like maybe if I feel like I'm proud of myself, like if I actually feel proud of myself, it'll go against some script that I've always had written or yeah. some some thing that was always written inside of me. You know, it's yeah. like, it, it's almost like it wouldn't, if I wrote on the wall of myself, I'm proud of you, it wouldn't even and show up on the wall. Wow. What emotion would you, know? you feel if you saw that? Um, like what emotion would I feel if I saw what? Uh, I'm proud of myself. Would you go bull? Would you be pissed off by it? Would you be annoyed? Would you just no? I think I feel ashamed of myself for even thinking it. That's interesting. Well, yeah. Produced an emotion in you just now. Even when you just thought yeah. about it, I saw that flash in your eyes. It's just wow. a little bit of water, wow. a little yeah. bit of fluid. Oh yeah, dude. Fuck, we cry on here every week. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. beautiful. Sorry. No, it's okay. But yeah, we don't no. have any. We don't have any shame about that. No, you shouldn't. But I'm yeah. saying, liquid le leaving your body in a public place as long as through your eyes is not a problem. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, don't ask, don't ask. <laughs> That's right. Well, my point is, there's a real anchor for you there. So let me explain it to you. Everybody has what I call an emotional home. Yeah. Do you ever watch like um, a place here and let's say, you know, where the cyclone happens every two or three years and it wipes out everything or a tornado comes through? Oh, yeah. And you see these poor people, all their stuff's all over the ground and they're picking it up. And you, you could have a heart of stone not to feel. They rebuild. Two years again, it happens again. Two years later, it happens again. Some part of you eventually goes, why don't you move? <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. why don't you yeah. move? A lot of Vietnam's like that. It floods. New Orleans is like that. That's it floods. New Orleans yeah. like that. So here's why don't they move? Because it's home. Mm. It's what they know. We have an emotional home. We have certain emotions that got built up in your youth. And I had four fathers. I had a mother that was pretty intense. And I had a lot of emotions that came out of that experience. If I didn't reprogram myself, I wouldn't be sitting here with you today because my emotional home was not good feelings. It's what I was used to. So even though it didn't feel good, you go there because it's what you know. Yeah. It's comfortable. So Yeah, it, it almost felt like I was deserting myself if I felt good about myself, that's which right. is crazy. I'd almost feel like I was leaving... I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like I know those feelings. No, no, finish that thought. I'm leaving what? Well, it's almost like I feel like I know those feelings of not feeling good about myself so well that I would be, I don't want to leave them alone because we always had each other. And it was like, yeah. if I leave them, you know. If have, I, you ever, have you ever had a friend? If I leave them, I just, I, I won't, I don't know. Does that make well, sense you, though? You, yeah, it does. You won't what? If I leave them, I'll just be letting them down. And they're not even... Yeah. They're not even real, but they're to part of me, some part of me they're inside of me, I can't even access. They're like his brothers. That's right. But they're your home. Brother. Yeah. And by the way, I, 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 I really father. appreciate you being so vulnerable because the people watching there seeing that allow them to be vulnerable. I've never seen Theo Vaughn that vulnerable. I've never seen him cry almost. I mean, you can, tears. you can, but the thing is, is that what's beautiful about this is Tony Robbins is so good at evoking certain emotions with the questions that he asked. That's what I take away from this video is he's asking, what is your emotional home? I've never heard that la language used that way before. And wow. ultimately it comes down to what Theo Vaughn's experiencing is things are coming up from his past where he's developed coping mechanisms to be okay, it, to sometimes feel proud of himself. But now that he's been off alcohol and he no longer drinks or does drugs, those used to be his coping mechanisms. So now he's you, be, you can tell he's become a lot more soft and not numb inside, and he's allowing himself to feel those emotions. What's your emotional home, David? My emotional home, dude, what I've always reverted back to for as long as I can remember is the feeling of anxiety. Mm. And what I mean by that is I have irrational fears that I'm starting to become better at, at kind of releasing them. But this, these are irrational feels of being fired even if I'm doing a phenomenal job mm. that I, that my employers could tell me, D David, like you're killing it. You're doing the greatest job. Like we're so honored to have you part of the team. Every video you create is phenomenal, yada, yada, you know, boosting my ego. But then the next video I create, I create it out of panic. Mm. I create it out of panic that if you disappoint them, yeah, your identity is destroyed because now your identity was created as somebody that succeeds, that always pushes through and always overcomes. And if you have that one moment of being false or if they talk down to you or call you out for something, now you're not good enough. And that's been the biggest struggle of my life 
to where if anybody was disappointed with me, it would destroy me to where, mm. you know, cause one of my biggest love languages has always been words of affirmation, but, I, but I allowed it to control me instead of seeing it for what it is. And I just would always feel this knot in my stomach. I'd be working on a video that I know I need to get done in two hours. And I'm like, I have to get this done or, yeah. you know, they're, I'm going to be disappointing somebody. And a lot of people think that once they get wealthy, that they're going to have so much peace in their life. No, it amplifies. Theon, Theo Vaughn's a multimillionaire. But it amplifies. But it amplifies <laughs> everything wrong in your that you have bottled up. So does that marriage. You haven't, oh, dude. Wealth and marriage will completely expose everything in your life that you haven't fixed. The dude. love of money, really, I think, is for me, as I was always scared of, if I was to make it, and be successful financially that I would fail. Like I would have some type of moral failure that I would lose everything. I would lose my wife, my kids one day. And that success can either be your greatest accomplishment or your greatest failure. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was afraid of success being a, a failure to me because there's a lot of people in my life that hit a level of success and strive for that. And once they got there, it wasn't what they thought it was. And then their family fell apart. Family fell apart. They had a moral failure. They Their wife cheated on them or they cheated on their wife because money in and of itself is just a tool. If not used correctly, it can be your downfall. Exactly. Right. So money in the hands of greatness or in the hands of somebody that has that good moral character can be used to either hurt people or it can be used to help people. A hundred percent. And I find it very interesting that Theo when he would feel proud of himself or write it on the wall, he would feel shame Yeah, because you never, as men, we often feel that we aren't worthy of being proud of us. But it was connected to his inner child. Yeah, exactly. Because his inner child was, I have to put off this certain persona because it's being a stand-up comedian is hard. I mean, <laughs> so hard. you're surrounded by, you're <laughs> surrounded by degeneracy and foolishness all the time. So I can only imagine the circles that he's in because most comedians, they get drunk before they go on stage. He doesn't drink anymore. Yeah. And he's constantly surrounded by people like Joe Rogan. As much as we love Joe, he, he does drink. He doesn't go crazy as much as other comedians, but constantly doing drugs and being degenerates. He doesn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So he's having to learn how to be funny outside of having those coping mechanisms, yeah. which he's talked about on other podcasts before.